Are you a nerd? No, why would you ask me that? It's Friday night and you're doing homework. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV nerds we love. Wow, you geeks are good. Nerds, I would say nerds probably more. For this list, we'll be looking at our favorite eccentric and brainy characters. We'll only be including live action brainiacs for this list because animated nerds like Velma from Scooby Doo deserve a list of their own. Who's your favorite TV nerd? Let us know in the comments. Number 10 Felicity Smoke, Arrow. Introduced in the first season, Felicity Smoke was originally meant to be a one off character that we'd never see again. But thanks to Emily Bett Rickard's performance and the impression she made on the audiences and her fellow castmates, she soon became a series regular. I should add personal internet researcher for Oliver Queen to my job title. There's so many reasons to love this character. Not only is she an incredible hacker, but she's great at providing crucial tech and communication support while her allies are in the field. When it comes to hacking, I'm the fastest woman alive. Oh, that was not as badass as I pictured. Felicity also has a habit for throwing out incredibly funny or inappropriate jokes without realizing it. It's really good having you inside me. And by you, I mean your voice. And by me, I mean my ear. I'm gonna stop talking right now. From hacking the bad guys to cracking up the good guys, she's the best of both worlds. Number 9 Dr. Temperance Brennan Bones Dr. Temperance Brennan is the brilliant forensic anthropologist that lies at the heart of the show. Although she's great at explaining the complex scientific details of important cases, she might have some trouble understanding your movie references. Oh, you spit in my hand, we're sculling a molder. I don't know what that means. It's an olive branch. Just get back in the car. Brennan went through a lot of changes through the course of 12 seasons. Through her interactions with Booth and Angela, we got to see a brand new side of this smart forensic anthropologist. The details aren't what's important. The poetry, that's what's important. And the poem here is you and Booth. She's far more than just another squint spouting off facts. Brennan has a deep passion for the truth and those who mean the most to her. You can't live not knowing. I found out what happened to my mother. I will find out what happened to my father too. Number eight, Abby Shuto, NCIS. Although Abby's consistent dedication to her goth aesthetic would be enough to make her awesome, what really makes her stand out is her scientific and technical talents. A boundary has been crossed, Gibbs. I've been violated. Nothing is sacred anymore. Yeah. Tell me. Someone stole my cupcake. For most of NCIS, her forensic and computer science knowledge came in clutch, and Abby's sunny personality always made visiting her lab into a pleasant experience. How long, Abby? Well, it's going to take some time, and this stuff doesn't smell very good. I don't think that laundry was a big priority. Abs! Yes. Um, two hours? Whenever I know something, you'll know something. You got one. Anything else? Yes, as a matter of fact. This is for you. Her comfort with sleeping in a coffin and ability to consume large amounts of caffeine made her one of the show's quirkier characters. However, those quirks and more don't change the fact she was absolutely instrumental to NCIS for over a decade, while never failing to be true to herself. McGee, I will get your DNA one way or the other. Do what the woman says, she sleeps in a coffin. Number seven, Chuck Bartowski, Chuck. One of the single biggest reasons why the show Chuck resonated with us was due to Zachary Levi's pitch-perfect portrayal of the geeky Chuck Batowski. And though I don't look at being lanky of build, you should know that I am probably the most important intelligence asset in the world. He's a relatable guy who's great with technology and not so good with romantic relationships. 
But Chuck's ordinary life suddenly changes when he accidentally gets spy secrets embedded into his brain. As he's pulled further into a life of espionage and danger, he upgrades his physical and social skills. I'll be like your very own Kevin Costner. Audiences rooted for Chuck as he became more well-rounded and developed a sweet relationship with his ally Sarah. They kept tuning in week after week to see what new heights this lovable nerd would reach. If I had a blog, this would be a really big day for me. Do my laundry, check. Save my sister's life, check. Save my own life. Final entry. Number six, Ben Wyatt, Parks and Recreation. During season two, Ben Wyatt became one of the breakout characters of Parks and Rec. He started out as a no-nonsense government official who was a stickler for every single rule. You're a jerk. I'm sorry? Easy. I'm sorry, these are real people in a real town, working in a real building with real feelings. This building has feelings? Maybe. There's a lot of history in this one, maybe it does. How can you be so blasé about Because this? I didn't cause these problems, Miss Nope. Your government did. But after learning about his deep love of calzones and intensive knowledge of pop culture phenomenons, we realized there was a quirky geek underneath the surface. And the more time he spent with Leslie, the more comfortable he became with expressing all his nerdy qualities. Ben notably used his eccentric talents to create a popular and successful board game called Cones of Dunshire. Now the object is to accumulate cones, four cones wins, but in order to get a cone you have to build a civilization. The other amazing thing is the challenge play? Actually, let me tell you more about the trivia cards because you're going to need to know about roadblocks first. No, never mind. It was remarkable to watch Ben go from a character we thought we'd hate to someone we'd love to invite to our next game night. Last time he was in between jobs, he got deep into claymation. So this should be different, hopefully. Number five, Carlton Banks, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Carlton was an intelligent, yet sheltered young man who grew up in Bel Air. While he had plenty of smarts and money behind him, he was far from the coolest kid in school. I mean, you treat me like I'm some kind of idiot just because I talk different. Differently. <laughs> Fortunately, his cousin Will was there to help him become more social. Carlton became a fan favorite because of how endearing the character became over time. He also formed a brotherly bond with Will, overcame many relatable issues, and eventually made it into Princeton. Whenever, wherever. I got your back, see? Whenever, wherever, I've got your back. W. <laughs> that just doesn't sound right coming from me, does it? Sounds great, man. And it didn't hurt that he had a signature dance that we all tried to imitate. It would have been easy for the show to use Carlton as just a punchline, but in the end, he became one of the best parts of the Bel Air based show. <laughs> Number four, Alex Dunphy, Modern Family. Modern Family's Alex Dunphy has an unwavering commitment to education. She repeatedly wins academic awards, excels in classes, and participates in many intellectual extracurricular activities. But one of her most fun characteristics was her tendency to use her intelligence to mess with her family. I need to stop taking shots at your intelligence. You don't do it that often. Well, you miss a lot of it. Ooh, there I did again. Did what? Um, it doesn't matter. How could anyone possibly believe you could charge your cell phone by rubbing it on your hair? Well, if you're Alex, you can convince anyone of just about anything. And it felt wrong that you two out here and I was in there all alone with Alex. Couldn't keep up, could ya? She knows everything. She made a dose and cry. Although she doesn't always relate to her family, it's plain to see that she cares for all of them. Alex's good heart and book smarts make her a standout member of the Dumfies. You have your fans? 
I have mine. Someday, your fans are going to work for my fans. Number three, Dr. Spencer Reed, Criminal Minds. Over the course of 15 seasons of Criminal Minds, fans got to know and love the character of Spencer Reed. His incredible ability to remember vast amounts of facts at any given time made him a superb special agent. Are you a genius or something? I, I don't believe that intelligence can be accurately quantified, but I do have an IQ of 187 and an eidetic memory and can read 20,000 words per minute. Yes, I'm a genius. And while this genius initially struggled to empathise with others and show his feelings, his co-workers helped him to be more of a social person. Reed's work allowed him to develop a great dynamic with fellow nerdy character Penelope Garcia. I'm crazy for cryptograms. If I look at you 20, that's a homophonic cipher like your classic Caesar cipher. Yeah, but where one letter of uncoded text can be transposed into one letter of coded text, here, one letter of uncoded text can be replaced by a coded letter from each of the four pure alphabets. Right, Nick, you're making it sound way more confusing than it is. While Garcia was more social and technologically savvy, Reeve was a much more awkward intellectual. Although he didn't always see eye to eye with her and other team members, it was still great to see this genius slowly come out of his shell. <clears throat> Blow it up. Never. Number two, Sheldon Cooper, The Big Bang Theory. With everything Sheldon does to his friends, one might wonder why they continue to tolerate him. He could be snobby at times and drive some people away. However, Sheldon does have hidden depths. He has a big heart and can understand when his friends really need some help. Sheldon. You have a guest who's upset. Right, I'll make tea. Oh, Sweetie, it's okay, I don't want tea. I'm sorry, it's not optional. <laughs> and Sheldon shows a huge amount of growth as he continues his relationship with the nerdy and amazing Amy. Which brings me to our next order of business. Fascinating. Jim Parsons did a great job of portraying this constantly evolving genius throughout the show's run. For all his quirks, Sheldon loves the people in his life, and we love what he's given to us. Don't come here! Bazinga. 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 Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Seth Cohen, The O.C. We identified with this smart character's awkwardness and nerdy references. So when you lost your virginity, I was, I was playing Magic the Gathering. You still play Magic? Yeah, but not as much. Willow Rosenberg, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. We loved watching this bookworm become a ridiculously powerful witch. Hey! We don't have time for this. Our friends are in trouble. Now we have to put our heads together and, and get them out of it. And if you two aren't with me 110%, then get the hell out of my library! Chidi Anagonye, The Good Place. The biggest philosophy nerd in the afterlife. My favorite city. And you even picked the ideal weather. Overcast and chilly. Perfect for staying inside and reading. Abed Nadir, Community. This unique filmmaker was one of our favorite members of the study group. The truth is, lots of girls like me because, let's face it, I'm pretty adorable. Mm -hmm. And uh, my aloofness unconsciously reminds them of their fathers, so... I'm more used to them approaching me. So we didn't damage your self-esteem or anything? Bert, I got self-esteem falling out of my butt. Paul, the Wonder Years. It's great to know that this loyal and smart kid eventually becomes a lawyer. Paul Pfeiffer, class president, civic booster. Naturally, I was proud of him. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Steve Urkel, Family Matters. Steve Urkel fit every nerd stereotype imaginable when he was first introduced. 
He was awkward, clumsy, and exceedingly intelligent. Urkel also seemed to be the cause of many problems at the Winslow family household. Did I do that? <laughs> But fans were still drawn to the character long after the show ended because of his kindness and ability to keep us laughing. And although a few of his inventions were too absurd to believe, they gave us great physical comedy and his suave alter ego, Stefan Urkel. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know that handshake. <laughs> How could you? I just made it up. <laughs> His signature suspenders and bright clothes also make for a great Halloween outfit. The fact that Steve Urkel left a lasting impression on pop culture without majorly changing his personality was inspiring to nerds everywhere. Spin and dip and jump and cavort and finish it off with a laugh and snort. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.